Finding good armor mods for Fallout 4 on PS4 can be just as difficult as trying to find someone who actually pre-ordered Battlefield 5. So I've browsed through and tested a bunch of armor mods to find the very best, and I think when you consider the restrictions on PS4 mods, you might be surprised by how good some of these mods actually are. So let's get started with number 10. Up first at number 10 is Inquisitor's Hood by Scientist711. This mod was requested from Scientist711 by someone who wanted the eyes, mouth and exhaust slash snorkel, or whatever that thing is, of the Inquisitor's cow to glow. From that, the Inquisitor's Hood was born, a reimagining of the Inquisitor's cow, with four different glowing colours, red, green, blue and orange. The Inquisitor's Hood can be found just outside the entrance to Hallucigen. The Inquisitor's Cow is one of the coolest looking helmets in Fallout 4, and the addition of the glowing decals with the Inquisitor's hood make it look even more badass. If I walked down a dark alley and saw a dude wearing that mask, I would probably just surrender and let him kill me. The Inquisitor's Hood has the same effects as the original. You get one point of intelligence for every 100 rads to a maximum of four. However, as a bonus, the Inquisitor's Hood also has plus 50 energy resistance. This mod does require the Far Harbor DLC, as that is where the original Inquisitor's Cow came from. If you're looking to do a Children of the Atom playthrough of Far Harbor, this mod would be a great way to spice up your armor. Next up at number 9 we have Custom Grognak by Devil Dog D Dog. This mod allows you to craft your very own set of Grognak the Barbarian armor, with the loincloth and gloves crafted separately so you can mix and match the massive range of new colours and patterns added by the mod. To craft the armor you also need to download the Armor and Weapons Keywords Community Resource mod, which I will link in the description, along with the Custom Grognak mod and all of the other mods mentioned in this video. Once you have a WKCR, you need to build the Armorsmith bench where you can craft your Grognak costume. You can also craft a cape for a bit of extra swag. You can even craft a chain from dog meat that you can wear around your right wrist. As mentioned before, the mod also adds a bunch of custom colours and patterns that you can use to customise the cape, gloves and outfit. There are about 90 to choose from in total. All three pieces are separate so that you can mix and match and create whatever style you want to go for. I decided to go with an all-American hero slash Minuteman theme, which I think turned out quite well. There are a couple issues with this mod, however. The boots didn't seem to be displaying properly properly and looked like they were almost melting into my character's legs and with the Minutemen pattern on the cape there was a gap in the middle. If you can try and ignore the messed up boots and the sometimes janky textures, this is actually quite an awesome mod. Running round as an all-American Minuteman hero bashing skulls in with a bladed baseball bat was a lot of fun so it might be worth giving this mod a try. At number 8 is Wasteland Bandolier by The Wasteland Girl. Those of you who've seen the third episode of my top 5 mods of the month for Fallout 4 series would have seen this mod already, but for those who haven't, the Wasteland Bandolier is a fantastic mod that adds a new item for sale at Fallon's basement in Diamond City, the Wasteland Bandolier. The Bandolier has vault suit linings which allows you to add extra resistances, torso armor linings to augment your playstyle, ammo bags for 10 to 50 additional points of carry weight, ballistic weave for ultimate protection, a legendary slot which you can use to remove and swap the legendary effect on the bandolier, and last but not least, your choice of plus two to any special stat. The legendary ability that comes with the bandolier is quick hands, which gives you a 20% increase to reload speed, so you can be the fastest gun in the waste. This legendary modification is actually unique and cannot be found in the vanilla game. Again, this mod uses a WKCR, so it can be worn over any piece of armor and will not take up a chest slot. All of the modifications require materials, however, they are loose mods, so they can be removed and re-added or swapped with another wasteland bandolier. This is a brilliant mod that adds a functional and useful piece of clothing to the game that looks awesome and the legendary ability makes sense because the purpose of a bandolier is to hold ammunition, making loading ammo faster. Now you can roleplay as Lara Croft or Nathan Drake, a great mod worth a download. At lucky number 7 is Pitboy Paint Jobs Club Freedom by Andrew CX. There are actually two parts to this mod, the Vault Tech Pack and the Colours of the Commonwealth Pack. 
The Colours of the Commonwealth pack adds a collection of 15 new Pip-Boy paint jobs, including both clean and weathered paints in a variety of colours from around the wasteland. The vault Tech pack adds an additional 12 new Pip-Boy paint jobs from undamaged vault Tech stores, and as you can imagine, they're all vault Tech or sort of vault themed Simply go to any armour workbench and select your Pip-Boy and change the material to the colour pattern you want. You will be able to select any of the Club Freedom paint jobs together with any of the paint jobs you might have purchased from the Creation Club, however of course you can only use one paint job at a time. All of these paint jobs are high quality, unique and law friendly. Andrew CX has done a fantastic job with these paint jobs, giving us a wide range of patterns and options to choose from to suit our playstyle. Who needs to pay for the Creation Club Pip-Boy skins when Andrew CX can produce free Pip-Boy skins of the same quality? Next up at number 6 is Custom Paint for Power Armor by Scientist711. Another entry from Scientist711, this time adding a collection of 26 new paint jobs for Power Armor for us to craft at the Power Armor workstation. All of the textures are based on community suggestions and can be added to X01, T60, T51 and T45 Power Armor. All of the crafting is free, so you don't need to worry about having materials, which makes things nice and easy. All of the new paint jobs add energy resistance, like the prism material. Some of the textures look a bit odd, and some look really nice. It's definitely worth trying them all, because you're sure to find one that you do really like. You can even mix and match the paint jobs with other armor pieces to create your own custom look. Similar to the Pip-Boy paint job mod we just covered, who needs to pay for Creation Club Power Armor skins when Scientist 711 can produce free Power Armor skins of the same quality? At the halfway point on this top 10 list, we have Separate Coats, another mod by Andrew CX. This mod adds two standalone coats as separate craftable clothing pieces at any chemistry station. The two coats are the Bomber Jacket from the Brotherhood of Steel Vertibird Pilot Jackets and the Battle Coat from Maxon's Battle Coat. You can add Ballistic Weave to these coats and wear any Under Armour underneath them. Just keep in mind that you will see clipping with some Under Armour pieces when wearing these coats. This is especially apparent with bulky Under Armour, however light Under Armour, such as vault suits, will have very light clipping. The bomber jacket will look a little bulky and oversized, however this can't be fixed due to the no external assets restriction on PS4. As much as I dislike Elder Maxon and the Brotherhood of Steel, you have to admit that they've got style, because the bomber jacket and Maxon's battle coat are both pretty awesome looking. Now you can access Maxon's coat without having to kill him, and as an added bonus you can wear whatever you want underneath it. Add Victorian Brothers. At number 4 we have Special Flight Helmets and Eyeglasses by Boulder Blazer. This mod adds one pair of eyeglasses and three different flight helmets that can be crafted at any chem station under the utility section. Once crafted you can modify them at the armor workbench with the following options. Add 1 to 10 points to all of your special stats. Add 10 to 100 to all damage resistances. Change the texture of the eyeglasses and helmets. Change the glass type of the eyeglasses and helmets. Change the legendary effect of the eyeglasses and helmets. Add Ballistic Weave, add Lining similar to the Vault Suit, add the Brotherhood of Steel Combat Armor Helmet mod which adds Radiation Resistance, and you can even add X01 Power Armor Resistances. There are a ridiculous amount of different helmet and glass textures to choose from, allowing you to create hundreds of different variations of the flight helmet. You could even make a Darth Vader style mask and pair that with the light sword mod I covered in my top 10 weapons mod video and you've got yourself a Sith Lord. You can make some seriously cool looking helmets with this mod and you can make them as powerful or as weak as you want them to be. A good mod, give it a try. Next up at number 3 we have Kellogg's Cybernetic Implants by Losterot. This is another mod that I've covered before in a top 5 mods of the month video, so you may have seen this mod already. However, for those that haven't, this mod makes the cybernetic implants you find on Kellogg's body after getting your revenge on him actually useful. Bethesda did actually plan for you to be able to use Kellogg's cybernetic enhancements, but it got cut from development for unknown reasons. This mod changes that by making them equipable, giving you some very useful advantages. Firstly, you will need to grab the Brain Augmenter prototype from the Memory Den in Good Neighbor and take that, the Limb Actuator and the Pain Inhibitor to a chem station and use Fusion Cores to power them back up for your own use. 
By default, the Brain Augmenter will give you the targeting HUD effect, which highlights living targets, the Limb Actuator will increase your damage output by 20%, and the Cybernetic Pain Inhibitor will prevent fall damage. However, if you have the holotape log found in the Institute with the recording of Kellogg talking to an Institute doctor whilst getting his implants installed, you can actually customise the implants by choosing different effects. The other effects for the Brain Augmenter are Night Vision, Slow Time and Water Breathing. For the Limb Actuator, you can choose from Carry Capacity Increase, Movement Upgrade and Reload Speed Increase. And for the Pain Inhibitor, you can choose to regenerate health, Medic Pump or Poison Immunity. If you've blown up the Institute or can't be bothered to find the holotape like me, you can download the KCI Helper mod and craft it at a chemistry station along with the cybernetics in case you lost them. This is a fantastic, law-friendly mod that restores cut content that was originally planned for Fallout 4 that I think shouldn't have been cut from the game. It's not overpowered and the perks make sense. Our penultimate mod on this top 10 list is Power Armor Wasteland Adventures, or Power for short, by 3Lyric. Sorry if I messed up the pronunciation of that. Power adds 49 new Power Armor coatings to the game, with each coating having its own shade, as well as new sets of stats and perk item requirements, making it balanced and lore friendly. It also adds a winterized coating for X01, which Vanilla didn't have for some reason. It adds three new material add-ons to increase power armor durability, allowing you to double, triple, or even quadruple your power armor durability. Adds a new category for decals, which can be applied to all Vanilla power armor types, except for Raider or Hellfire. Adds mini figurine versions of all 49 coating colors, which can be built in workshop mode. And it even adds a toggle switch for them, so that you can disable them from being in your build menu if you want to declutter your statues category. So as you can see, this mod adds a bunch of new customization options for Power Armor, adding more depth to the Power Armor system and providing some new useful mods. The Power Armor figurines are also a nice little bonus that are surprisingly good. I will most likely be using them to decorate my settlements. Finally, we've made it to number 1. The best armor mod for Fallout 4 on PS4 is Unified Clothing Overhaul, or UCO for short, by that man again, Andrew CX. UCO is the ultimate clothing overhaul, packed with amazing features allowing you to completely customize your armor and clothing in Fallout 4. So what does UCO do? You can now upgrade all clothes, armor hats, helmets, bandanas and glasses with ballistic weave and linings. You can now layer armor pieces so that you can wear them over clothing that previously did not allow you to do so, such as Maxon's battle coat or Lorenzo's suit and many more. Color swap allows you to change the color of most items or armor, clothing, power armor and pit boys, allowing you to change the vault suit into a black tactical texture and many more possibilities. Invisible armor allows you to make any armor piece invisible so you can avoid ugly clipping, giving you the effect of the armor without the ugly appearance. Decal swap allows you to change the decal on your combat armor, Minutemen General's uniform and vault suit, with a crazy amount of new decal options. Legendary swap allows you to take the legendary effect of a piece of armor and add it to another. So if you've got a really good legendary effect on a piece of leather armor, but you're wearing full combat armor and don't want to ruin your look with a random piece of leather armor, you can simply remove the legendary from the leather armor and put it on your combat armor. Type swap allows you to change your armor pieces between light, medium, and heavy armor, which is really useful. You can craft many armor, weapons, clothing, ammo, and custom items, even a Nuka jetpack. And my personal favourite feature is the ability to wear costumes and even give costumes to dog meat so that you can turn yourself into a synth, alien or even an iBot and dog meat into a wolf or rabid dog and many more. This is an incredible mod that has been in my load order from the first time I found it back in 2016. If you don't have this mod already, what are you waiting for? Download it now. That will take us to the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like and hit subscribe and click the notifications bell button next to the subscribe button to be notified every time time I upload a new video. If you want to help me make more and better videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm also giving away a copy of Fallout 76, so check the description of this video for a link to enter the giveaway for free. I'll see you in the next video, good luck out there in the wasteland.